My friends, the reason why we want to pay close attention to the Old Testament and the New Testament is that we want to know the real God. Uh, we don't want to just pick certain passages that fit in with our predispositions in some way and then say, well, that's it, that's all I want to know. We, instead, no, we, we believe that the God who has drawn us to himself through Christ his Son, you know, that he's revealed in the pages of the Old and New Testament. And, and I, I think in particular, this book of Psalms that we're going through is, is showing us the full-orbed picture uh, of God as he's revealed himself in his word. So here, this psalm is rather frightening in a way, but again, we, we want to know. We want to know the truth. So we have in Psalm 50, this beginning, the mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. That's interesting, summoning the whole earth. We're going to see that the earth are really called in as witnesses in, a, in the courtroom of God as he makes a case against his own people. From the rising of the sun to its setting out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire. Around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. You see, this, this is a summoning where God has called his people before him to answer to charges, all right? And what are the charges? Well, here's God's case against his people. He says, hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every beast of the field is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and all its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Now, so he said, look, this is not the issue that you don't do enough sacrifices, all right? That's not the problem. Look, I, I don't need these animals. I don't need this. So what is it that God is wanting? Instead, listen to this. Listen to this charge he brings. He, he tells them what they ought to be doing. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Why don't you thank me? and perform your vows to the Most High. In other words, why don't you recognize that I am God and you are my people and then offer up to me thanksgiving and praise and call upon my name, he says, in the day of trouble. That's, that's good too. Call upon my name. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Isn't that interesting? So this is his case against his people. No relationship with me, no thanksgiving, no appropriate calling upon my name for aid. Instead, just continual sacrifices that end up only being external and the internal problem remains. Okay, now we go into the next section. He says, look, some of his people, you know, they've continued in wickedness. And that's very serious. So here he goes. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, right, stealing, you are pleased with him and you keep company with adulterers. There's that commandment. Uh, you give your mouth free reign from evil and your tongue frames deceit. There's false witness. More false witness here. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was one like yourself, but now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. So God brings forward this case, you see, that not only are we lacking in relationship, but you're sinning against my commandments in the way that you treat one another 
So now it's time to repent, and this is how this psalm ends. Mark this then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. That's a wonderful invitation to us to do this very thing that, that we should thank the Lord and we should order our ways rightly according to his commandments. Lord, uh, we do thank you for all your many, many gifts. Father, what do we have except that which has come from you? So thank you for all of it, Lord. And now we just commit ourselves to your ways. Lord, help us and give us grace for every need. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.